Hey fam, it's Mariah, and welcome to Calvary Conversations, where we simplify God's word to reach today's culture by casting down arguments through real, radical testimonies and biblical conversations. Now let's get started. Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah Riley, and today I'm here with my big brother, Pastor Morgan Roders. Hey guys, what's up? What's up, Mo? And we are here with our special guest. I'm just kidding. But we are here with our dad, Pastor Craig Roders. Woohoo! Woo! He's back. Craig Roders, my mic. <laughs> <laughs> He's making fun because now we're starting to test uh, our mics. We're testing making, my patience. We're testing his patience. So. <laughs> but we are going to do um, a little topical podcast today mm. with mm-hmm. my dad because he says that he has better quiet times than us. So he's <laughs> <laughs> trying to show off. No, I just have a quiet time. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, we're going to um, hear talk. what the old man has to say. All right. <laughs> Sorry, we just like to make fun of each other. But it's <laughs> it's good that... <laughs> We have, okay. been on, we have been live in a long time. We don't know what we're doing. All right. I want to read to you because I only have a few minutes because they tell me they got worship practice. So we got to rush the old man. All right. No. Psalms 32 1 says this Blessed is he. This is a psalm to give you background of David with Bathsheba when God's forgiven him. And he's kind of talking about how God's forgiveness is so good. But he says, uh, Psalms 32, and, and the other psalm is 50, uh, Psalms 51 is another one about him uh, saying how the Lord forgave him. But here's what it says. Psalms 32, 1 says, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. And it's kind of cool as I study this. The word here in the King James transgression, it's a difference between transgression and sin. The Greek word for sin means missing the mark. Like It means like you can do your best, but if you miss the bullseye, that's what that's what sin is. It was a the bullseye, and so every ring off was a sin. So hmm. you could be three sins off. And so do your best to try to hit the bullseye, but it's not good enough if you're off from the bullseye. Uh, but the Bible also says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23, which we all know. But Jesus, hear this, the balance... Jesus said, but be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect, Matthew 5, 48. We, so we as Christians, we need to try to, to we, we need to try to not sin, but we're going to sin. But the word transgression here is different than sin. The word transgression means miss, it, it's not missing the mark, but it's a willfully stepping over the line. Hmm. So transgression is a willful, knowledgeable act of rebellion against God. And the example of that is David when he sinned with Bathsheba. David Mm -hmm. knew, right? It says David was a man of God's own heart. So David knew that adultery was wrong. He knew that committing murder was wrong. He knew that, uh, you know, conspiracy to put uh, Uriah, um, Bathsheba's husband, on the front lines was sin. But he did it anyway. And I like to prove this concept. David says in Psalms 51, 4, which is the same psalm, uh, you know, is kind of the same in line of him repenting. It says when he acknowledged his sin, when um, uh, when Nathan the prophet confronted him, him, he said against you, he's talking to God, against you and you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. And I like that because that shows me that there's a big difference and sometimes you know like we'll talk about people who are sleeping with their boyfriend or girlfriend Mm. and they'll say oh i'm so sorry i've sinned and and please forgive me but they're not it's not like a whoops you know like Mm -hmm. maybe we struggled once or twice in our year of dating but if they're having sex every day or every other day that's a transgression Mm -hmm. Mm. that's a willful yeah departure from what god wants that's willful departure and we know that and i and i say that because it just really hits me of how uh we really need that distinction between Mm -hmm. sin which we all do right Mm -hmm. we all miss the mark right you know we're never going to be perfect this side of heaven but there's a lot of people that are transgressing and trying to call it sin like oh i'm only human i'm only you know i'm Mm -hmm. not perfect but Wait a sec, but if you're living with your boyfriend, I mean, that's not a whoops, that's a willful yeah. transgression. And I think I'd like to see what you guys so think about that. So you're saying iniquity is missing the mark. Sin. That's sin. 
Yeah, and I heard someone say that now people shoot the arrow and then they draw the target around it so that they have a bullseye mm. well, each time. You know? Yeah, or they just because make they're it just so big they make their their target good. as big as a barn. So yeah. that way, right? I just I won't sleep with my boyfriend more than a, once a week. You know what I mean? So yeah, mm-hmm. kinda, or people you know. I mean say that they're uh, they're like technical virgins. People yes, say by like around the rosy. doing everything, but and so it's like you still like God knows your intention and what you're doing. And if you're trying to walk in purity and like you said, there's a a slip and a fall that would be, so you're saying that would be considered sin, but transgression is like, I know that the Lord's telling me not to go over to my boyfriend's house, but I'm going to go anyway. And I know what's going to happen. Yeah. Or, Mm -hmm. or like, yeah. Or like when David was, you know, there's the big question, Bathsheba was bathing. Yeah. Right. In the morning. And they said, did she kind of know what she was doing mm-hmm. or was she just bathing and, and, and David was being a peeping Tom? We don't know that, right? Mm-hmm. Only God and David know that. Mm-hmm. But the fact is, what should he have done? Like Joseph, like, like uh, Martin Luther said, you Please. can't, you can't keep help the birds flying over your head, right? Temptation being birds mm-hmm. flying over your head. But you have to, your job is to have self-control and not let it land. Mm-hmm. He should have looked away and ran. But instead, he took a second look then that gave birth right looking gave birth to sin which then gave birth to transgression where he said hey i can call i'm the king i can call her up to come mm-hmm. some people even suggest that he raped her i don't know if i'm going to go there because a man after god's own art i don't know but he did do he went pretty far mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. but i'm just saying is that he was king and it'd be hard for bathsheba to say no mm-hmm. to the king back mm-hmm. then so he misused his power but I like how he says in Psalms 51, 4, against you and you only have I sinned, where the yeah. real sin starts with not fearing God yeah. mm-hmm. because he should have feared God. Wait, oh, she's married to one of his 30, top 30 men. Uriah was, a, was an honorable man. Yeah. And it was crazy. Yeah. I just found this out too, that when David sinned with Bathsheba, got her pregnant, then he tried to get Uriah to come. He came to, yeah. come to the castle or, and have, got him drunk. Yeah. But he wouldn't, he wouldn't, um, he wouldn't, he laid, he slept outside, right outside the palace mm-hmm. gate because he wouldn't go to his wife, even though he wanted him to, so that way he could think it's his kid. Mm-hmm. But this is kind of cool. Listen to this. Talk about for men. They would make a vow yeah. that they wouldn't have sex with their wife until the battle, the battle was over. won. Yeah. I mean, that'd be a motivating factor to not yeah. drag out a war, right? And so that's <laughs> what he did. He's like, no, I'm not going to be with my wife, even though he could have been. Yeah. But out of honor and out of respect for his men, even though he was called by the king to come back, he wouldn't have, he wouldn't go and have relations with the wife because he, they had that vow that they wouldn't have sexual relations with their wife mm. until the battle is won, which is pretty cool. I think that's mm. a good yeah. thing. We should institute it again. I think our wars, wars would be a lot shorter. Yeah. yeah. People true. kept their word and were, were more honorable back then, yeah. it seemed like, too. Yeah. So, yeah. But if Dave was smart, since I used to be a big scammer, you know, <laughs> he should have brought his wife to the castle, uh, the <laughs> kingdom, and had them have a suite. You know, and he should have done that, but you see. But maybe he still wouldn't have messed still around honorable. there because he's so honorable. So, he saw you know, the, so, the battle yeah. was not won. But, you know, he... he uh, he thought he'd just go home but yeah. yep so what yeah. would you say if someone was thinking like okay so what if i did a whoops like and you're calling that a sin not a transgression do i still need to ask for forgiveness like what what would you say someone to do yeah if well, they do have i i know it's up. hard to believe but i did a whoops you know as a christian and the thing i did is i said okay i sinned and so I don't want to transgress, so I broke up with my girlfriend, and I wouldn't. I broke up with her for like three months because I really wanted to kind of, you know, get back with God and kind of figure out, like David, well, how did I do that? What happened? And this and what wasn't happened? when you were a pastor. Just yeah, it wasn't. Clarifying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wasn't like this yeah. happened. People need. To, yeah, people. Yeah, no one ever spread rumors, right? Yeah. But uh, yeah, but the thing is, you have to take precaution, like like me. Mm-hmm. Now, I won't meet alone with a woman, right? And I was telling my kids humbly, like, I'm single now because my wife died two years ago, their mom. But, you know, a part of me goes, I'm 62 years old. I can meet with a woman alone. But I go, no, hmm. I can't because I probably, because David, so they say it was yeah. probably about 55 mm-hmm. when he's suing the sheep. So he's thinking, I'm older. I got eight wives. I'm good. You know, I'm all good. Or I think he had seven at the time. But mm-hmm. it's like you, wherever a man thinks he's strong. So I have mm-hmm. to realize because I was married for almost 28 years and I'm kind of used to 
being physical. So it'd be mm. easy. I have to know. I think we as people have to be realistic. That if I, I always say mm. to kids, it's like when you're dating someone, people would, I say, don't be alone with your your future spouse or someone you're courting because especially when it's late and you're tired because you can be drunk with tiredness where you don't think about the consequence you don't mm -hmm. think about tomorrow you think oh i'm just we're in love let's you know whatever tonight mm -hmm. and that's where i say when you're tired or when your parents leave the room you need mm -hmm. to leave because yeah. we it's not if we sin mm -hmm. it's just how fast will we sin but we need to put up safeguards so it's real hard to sin. now hear this mm -hmm. if you don't care about god you're going to sin but yeah. like David said, against you, God, mm. Psalms 51, 4, against you, God, and you alone have I sinned. Because first breakdown was his relation with God, that he didn't fear hurting the heart of God. And that's what we have to be. We have to see this, as Jesus said in John 14, 15, I believe. He says, if you love me, mm -hmm. you'll obey my commands. And see, people have, Satan has been so deceitful to twist obedience to legalism. What's your famous quote of A.W. Tozer, my? Um, it says the church will be at the height or the peak of its heresy when they call obedience to God legalism. Mm -hmm. And I explain that. So the, the, so the key is it's all about your motivation. Yeah. yeah. Why do you, if, now if you say I'm obeying this and this and this, and therefore I've earned salvation because I don't sleep with my boyfriend or girlfriend, that's wrong. That's legalism. Mm -hmm. But if you say I don't sleep with my boyfriend or girlfriend or I don't commit adultery on my wife or husband, why? Because I love God. And because he's worthy to ask me to be obedient. And how many know this? Hear this. The Bible says in Hebrews that sin is pleasurable for a season, yeah. mm -hmm. but in the end, it leads to death. The Bible says in Galatians uh, 6, I think, 7-ish, it says, if you sow to the flesh, yeah, it'd be pleasurable for a second, but it's uh, there's an old song, a rock song, that says you better bring the check around, but it's going to cost you way more than it's worth because it says when we sin or walk in the flesh, it, we reap uh, death and corruption. But if we sow to the Spirit, meaning mm -hmm. the obedience to God out of love, then we'll reap everlasting life. And mm -hmm. I think most of us in our right mind, right? I, I guarantee you, if you could talk to David, was that worth that that indiscretion, that uh, that adultery? Was that worth? No, it caused major problems with his yeah. family. The sword came. Absalom rebelled because then David didn't judge sin rightly with Absalom, with uh, Tamar mm -hmm. and um can forget the other his brother raped his half sister and he didn't deal with it right so that set Absalom off and it caused all kinds of problems in the family so sin has re it's like a ripple effect it doesn't mm -hmm. stop just with you it just keeps going and that's why it's so important yeah. that we believe God's word and that we obey because we love God I think that's yeah. what that frustrate there's frustrates still consequences even though you you'll you're forgiven by yeah, God he was forgiven, and even yes. though he was called a man after God's own heart he still reaped the consequences and he wanted to build a temple for God and he yeah. couldn't you know mm. and I don't think it was just because he was a man of war it wasn't that blood right. Could have been, yeah, the murder. Because yeah. that would be weird if God it's said, not killing, kill yeah. all the, my it's enemies, the but then I hold you accountable for it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think it's because he used his power to have Abner pull back and let yeah. him be killed. And I think he that was that was the man of blood yeah. that yeah. he was. It wasn't, you know, because now some people disagree with me, but hey, they have the right to be wrong. Yeah. You know? And what would you <laughs> say about, um, in Psalm 51, it says, in verse 11, it says, Do not cast me away from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. And, and then it's the verse that I think we we're talking. Oh, it's we talk about a lot. Verse 13 says, then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall be converted to you. Mm. So what would you say with that? Like, was it saying there like if he didn't repent from that, like he would not have the Holy Spirit in his presence and that he would possibly go to hell? Like if he hadn't repented and I don't know. Well, that's, God the, knows, that's the que that, that's a million dollar question, yeah. you know, and I've, I've been crazy enough to answer it, but I don't think I, I'm learning to be smarter. But the question <laughs> is, right, Calvin's or Arminians, was, was, mm -hmm. was that person, if they continue in sin, were they saved mm -hmm. or did they depart from the faith? Now it says in. I think it's First Timothy four one. It says in the last days some will depart from the pa faith, and that means apostasia. Now people argue once saved, always saved, or some people like Arminius will believe you can be saved and depart. But I just say that if you're truly saved, what did Jesus say in, in Matthew seventeen or Matthew seven twenty one ish? Starting, 
he says, or before that, I'm sorry, Matthew seven fourteen. He says, a good tree produces good fruit Amen. and a bad tree produces bad fruit. Yeah. But you'll know them, right? We're not to judge for condemnation. But he says, you'll know them by their actions. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter what people tell you. Yeah. It matters what their actions. If someone is consistently sleeping with their boyfriend, like we've had a few people here, right, that came here mm -hmm. and said, oh, I'm saved. And then I say, okay, but the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6, fornicators shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So mm -hmm. what do you do with that? Mm -hmm. Well, I prayed a prayer. Okay, but Jesus said you'll know them by their fruit, by their actions. And so mm -hmm. I would just challenge people that because I think, you know, that we have a lot of people, as you've heard me say this many times, that the stats are still real high in America, like 73% of Americans claim to be Christian. Mm -hmm. But then when you do basic tenets of the faith, it reduces anywhere from 10 to 7%. Mm -hmm. So... You know what I mean? I think a lot of people are just having Jesus. I said a couple of weeks ago on Sunday morning, a lot of people see Jesus as Savior, yep. but have not made him Lord. And what did Jesus say? Why do you call me Lord, Lord, but do not do what I say? It's as if God believes he's God. Yeah. And if you really appreciate his grace, which is unmerited, undeserved favor, then you should obey. Mm -hmm. yeah. You should say, I obey not to be saved. Yeah. But I obey because I am saved. And that's a, if you ask, what is the one thing we press as a church? Because what does it say in New Living in Matthew 28? It says, go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey all that I command you. See, a lot of people just mm -hmm. teach the word and just kind of mm -hmm. know a lot about God. Yeah. But they don't really commit to say, okay, I want to know God, but I also want to obey yeah. what the Lord. I've been telling that to my daughter, Trinity, is that we, a lot of people say, oh, I know that. But it doesn't matter what you know. It matters what you do, right? We think knowing mm -hmm. the truth is the same as living the truth. Satan knows the truth. Pharisees yeah. knew the truth, but they didn't. Jesus said, you're of your father, the devil. So what's the real distinction? Will be that loving mm -hmm. obedience. Not that we'll be perfect, right? We will sin. Mm -hmm. We will miss the mark at times, right? But there's a difference between missing the mark and willful, mm -hmm. rebellious transgression where you go, I'm going to live with my boyfriend and call myself a Christian and say, oops, that's sin. I'm yeah. only perf human, but really it's willful transgression. So we need to focus not just on sin, but is this a sin of a whoops that I truly made a mistake, right? Mm -hmm. I was driving on the road. I got angry. Someone pulled out in front of me. Or was this living with my boyfriend is not, is that's a transgression because yeah. that's willful. Because you said, uh, was it John seven twenty one or you said seven, about bearing fruit? Seven fourteen ish. Yeah, and then in chapter fifteen we always talk about abiding and it says to abide in the vine and then when you do you'll produce much fruit. Without him we can't do anything. Mm -hmm. Anything good, you know. Yeah. Anything that's uh, you know, beneficial even for eternity. So yeah, I think that's a good thing to ask yourself is are you abiding in the vine? Is my life like that is it, it am i in obedience to god because that's the fruit of if you really love god so yeah. yeah and a question that i have too is what what if someone had been in blatant sin like let's just say they were living or like not even living with their boyfriend or girlfriend they were just like hiding it and fornicating and now they're married and they feel like everything's fixed we don't have to tell anyone but they see like a repercussion of that like difficulty and maybe their intimacy maybe just all these other things well, like what you would remember you that? remember that because here this is something that i see a lot is yeah. um dobson would say because men can compartmentalize they can say well you know, I sinned, but now I've asked forgiveness. It's done. Yeah. Where women are more emotional. Mm -hmm. I know it's hard to believe in this day and age where everyone's equal. Mm -hmm. Women are more emotional. So when a woman, when a woman has sex with her husband before marriage, she sees it as guilt and sin and wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then what happens is even though she's forgiven, her mind still says this is wrong. Yeah. She mm -hmm. brings that in. And it's a lot harder for women to all of a sudden go, oh, it's good now. It's a lot harder. They have that guilt and they have that kind of shame. And so, you know, mm -hmm. that's why the Bible says the marriage bed is blessed because before, if you bring that in, you're going to have repercussions. And mm -hmm. it's not God punishing you. It's just a guilt, your guilty conscience. And mm -hmm. now God can heal that because it says in Hebrews that the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus cleanses us from an evil, guilty conscience. But that is because women tend to be more sensitive than men. Notice I said 10 they carry that in and kind of go, ooh, and it's where men go, come on, we're forgiven, honey, just come on, let's just go have fun and not 
think guilt, mm -hmm. but they still struggle with that. And that's why, yeah. again, the repercussions, even though mm -hmm. they're forgiven, that doesn't mean her mind isn't going to still kind of associate the guilt and shame of having premarital sex. Yeah. So yeah. I think that that when you look at Second Samuel, when Nathan, you know, right, he comes to David and he basically and that says him about that. they some people say a year yeah, nine months so to he, a year so he'd been yeah. messing he'd been kind of away from God for about uh, nine months to mm -hmm. a year mm. yeah and so he gives him like a parable basically like a <laughs> poor man having a lamb and whatever and then the other guy taking it for his own for and food. killing it yeah. to eat it he has many and lambs he's he has like one. what should happen to that person he said mm. that he should die. should die and then he <laughs> says you are the man like yep. that is you David so when you even think about it, like David didn't even confess, like he got caught, mm -hmm. but yet he still repented. Like his heart turned to the Lord. And that's the verse that my dad is saying. It says against you and you alone have I sinned to the Lord. Mm. You know, it's not like a lot of times we get upset because we got caught like, oh, OK, fine, fine. I'm sorry. You know, or men, you know, you can tell if my dad always said if he's asked people, he always looks at the woman if they've been like sinning because they're usually the one that's more <laughs> convicted. Um, but I would say that if you're maybe feeling right now like, hey, I know that we both like confess to the Lord, but we still feel like something's weird. Maybe it is that you need to confess to people who are around you, like family members or people them. you lie to. Like if you lie to people and you're like, oh, we're good. We're not doing anything. And you're claiming that you are waiting. I think it is good to be able to be honest yeah. and open. Because what is it the says scripture? James, the James 5, mm. I think it's 16, Five, 14. 14. It says, confess, confess your sins to one another and pray for each other mm -hmm. so that you may be healed. Not so maybe your marriage is really struggling and maybe you're i don't know even some things or i've heard stories of people not being able to have children or stuff mm. because they maybe have things that they need to confess i'm not saying if you can't have kids right now it's because yeah. of that yeah. but to search ask lord to search you like god what is happening you might have all these kids but then you and your spouse behind closed doors are always fighting and not that m couples don't fight but you're just you can't ever you see mean, eye to eye real, you and don't you don't have, real, have intimacy. real intimacy. Yeah. You guys are just going through the motions, but that's where I feel like the Lord right now wants to heal those marriages mm -hmm. or even just relationships with like family members. Maybe you've lied to them and were really deceptive and thinking, Oh, I got away with it. I don't know what it's about. Maybe you stole money or you did something. The Lord's telling you right now and you feel that conviction in your heart because the Holy Spirit's living inside of you and you feel that you need to tell them. And maybe it's like, years years later and mm. you're feeling that now that's something that the lord has convicted me to make sure yeah. i keep short accounts but also if i want to keep hearing the holy spirit's voice and abiding in christ then if the lord prompts me to confess something like the other day i was basically i lied about something i was like oh i did this because i didn't want the person to get mad at me and mm -hmm. then i didn't mm -hmm. do it and then i had to confess to my husband and told people around me that I did that. And now I have to go tell the person that I lied to them. Um, and it wasn't even a thing that made sense. I basically was like, oh, yeah, I already wrote your thank you card. It's coming to you. <laughs> and I didn't write it yet. And so that yeah, was I wrote it in my head. so dumb. <laughs> or, but, or when we tell yeah. people, they said, thanks for praying for me. You go, and yeah. Like, yeah, I prayed. <laughs> and I was so convicted to where I was like, I feel like maybe if the Lord had it where I couldn't have any more kids, like, it would be because of that. And I know that's an extreme and people are like, okay, you're getting yeah, like where you're not believing that God is still faithful. Even though always faithless. Felt like that though. She's like, I know that's oh, my no, struggle. Am I not saved? You know, I know, like, but yeah. I would rather judge myself, myself rightly than be judged. That's yeah, always yeah. been my thing is be like, I don't want to put things on God that are not God. Like, Oh God, you would do this to me. But I want to make sure I'm so right with yeah. God that if a bad thing happened, I knew it It was because I'm right with God and I can still rejoice. Yeah. I want to be like Job where it's like yeah. I have nothing on me because yeah. I... And I think it can, what I think with I mean, what God's you're will, saying is basically. to mm -hmm. kind of the thing too, besides kids, because you're kind of a baby on the brain right now. Yeah. But as I think too is that... <laughs> I hear baby that Bible, It says <laughs> in, in, baby. in 51 and I think 32 says, my whose conscience is clear. Yeah. yeah. And it's hard to pray the prayer of faith when you have a guilty conscience. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to have faith that if you're having a struggle with your kids, that no, God's going to do a miracle. If you maybe can't have kids, you have you doctors, well, you can't, but you can't, but you, you know what I mean? We yeah. have to be feel with a right with God.
God yep. to have yeah. confidence in God. But if we have all this, see, what the enemy does, like I always say, people are either blocked in the past through guilt and shame yeah. or they're locked in the future with worry and, and, and anxiety. anxiety. But we have to live right now, right? Today's enough trouble, Jesus mm -hmm. said. But the way we do that is we deal with the past and yeah. we trust God for the future. But a lot of times people, I would say majority, I think the majority of counseling is guilt from the yeah. past. Yeah. And so what you have to do is confess that. And like you said, sometimes we've said, oh, I'm sorry to God. But then we kind of, the enemy goes, yeah, but you still did. Mm -hmm. But when we see it, I think it's not that we're priests to forgive each other. But when we mm -hmm. see another Christian say, hey, bro, God forgives you. Yeah. That kind of makes, oh, so if a sinful man can forgive me and say, hey, it's under the blood. Then that helps us God, yeah. to yeah. heal and really yeah. get rid of that guilt. And so that's I, the importance. I would say, yeah. besides having babies, because I don't really, I, I look like I'm ready to have a baby, but I don't <laughs> really want a baby. But I just want to be able to pray the prayer of faith yeah. that I don't have well, any Well, the reason shame. why I think of that's, that that's is I when think. you think about in the Old Testament, whenever there was a sin or something happening, yeah, then couldn't. they couldn't have kids. Like their womb was closed. And that's yeah. the only reason. And last well, week we were talking I've about heard, like, IVF and all that. Yeah. <laughs> so my is all about birth babies. Birth control and all that. But Sorry. like in counseling recently, I've seen that people, you know, hang on to bitterness or unforgiveness or whatever sin. And then they try to seek the Lord without dealing with that. Mm -hmm. And I've seen that recently where people yeah. are holding on to bitterness or unforgiveness. And then they're like, but I feel like I'm trying to seek the Lord, but I feel like I'm not getting anywhere. Yeah. I'm like, well, you're probably not. Your prayers might be hindered because you're not obeying God with, you know, yeah. confessing that sin and asking someone for forgiveness, yeah. you know? So, or even releasing someone else, you know. Yeah. And that's kind of going to yeah. go with our other video that we're going to do and our topic about Matthew 18 mm. and also going one on one the most to that person. Unobeyed scripture in all churches. <laughs> yep, exactly. And then the other verse that I have is um, Matthew 5. But do you guys have anything before we yes, start closing? Yes, I have some more. And, okay, you know good. me, Mr. Talker. <laughs> but uh, it, was, it says in John, uh, I quoted it earlier, but I want to quote it exactly so you guys can find it. Um, but it's uh, John fourteen fifteen. Jesus says, if you love me, obey my commands. And so there it is. That's what we encourage. Do you love Jesus? Well, Jesus says not if you love me, you might obey. He says, if you love me, truly love him. And I love what Henry Blackaby said. He's the guy who wrote Experiencing God. He says, usually when people have a problem with obedience, not sleeping with their boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever, whatever, not mm -hmm. ripping off stuff from work, that's usually a love issue. It's really, yeah. you know, and that's where I say, that's why I say, you remember you had an old boyfriend who wouldn't worship, and I go, mm -hmm. something's not right. Because mm -hmm. worship kind of tells where you are yeah, a lot of times, right? So if it's true. a personal thing, your hands in your pocket, you're not singing, something's not right. But I love yeah. this, and I want to end with this, at least my part. But at 1 John 5, 3, I just saw this. I love this. For this is the love of God, mm -hmm. that we keep his commandments. Hear this. This is the good part. Really good. It's all good, but here's a really good part. And his commandments are not burdensome mm. yeah. so if you love god yeah then obeying him is not burdensome it's not like oh I man legalism I it's i want to because i mm. trust that god's commands are not a heavy yoke to like hey i'm going to make life hard on morgan and mariah mm. no these are commands just like you said morgan is a good father you know you say mm. liza hold my hand to protect her it's not going hey it, oh, you don't hold man. Whoa, there's a char. You know, you are <laughs> yeah. protecting. And so we have to see his commands. If they're burdensome to you, I would say either get saved <laughs> or yeah. I would say really pray, God, give me a love for you. Yeah. Give me, let me yeah, move from nice. just being my savior that saves me from hell to now you yeah. gave me unmerited, undeserved, unearned favor, which is grace, to where now I want to obey. And they're not burdensome. It's a joy. I trust your ways father knows best yeah and that's the thing and that's sometimes the we have to not ask so many questions like i know that Just probably dumber as little? a parent <laughs> no, no i ask a lot of questions yeah, yeah. but if i'm always asking you like but why dad why do i have to do this as a kid I and if, I, if I keep saying, why, 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 you know, it can be annoying if you're just trying to save my life in the moment. You're like, yeah. I'm not going to answer why right yeah. now. I'm just going to save your life. And sometimes what and would so, I say to you? Just do it. Yeah. Like I'll explain yeah. it later, baby. Because mm. sometimes I don't have the time. You know me and I try to explain things a lot. But I would sometimes just say, just do it. Yeah. You yeah. It reminds me like of a verse. It says, sorry, Ryan. It says, the Lord directs our steps. So why try to understand everything along the way? Mm -hmm. So sometimes you're like. Not that we're saying be dumb. No. We're saying because I, I ask a lot of questions. But I, still I think that's do. faith. Is what but you're saying. there's a time where like. 
okay, I know that the word of God tells me not to sleep with my boyfriend or girlfriend. There's mm-hmm. clear reasons you why. sleep with your boyfriend right Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but there's clear reasons why not to do that, but say something more vague. But you're like, okay, I know the Lord doesn't want me to do this. Like, I don't know all the reasons or why, him. but I trust him, mm-hmm. and I know his ways are best. So. And th- like I said to yeah. someone a couple weeks ago, if God isn't good, if you say you're a Christian and you're like, oh, but God, I don't know, God, uh, then where do you go? Yeah. If God isn't good, then no one's go good. Then the you world. might as well drink That's some Kool-Aid or check out. But God is good, and mm-hmm. you have to kind of get that down, even when you don't yeah. completely understand it, and say, I trust you. Because what does yeah. it also say in Hebrews eleven six? Without faith, it's impossible to please him. Now, you know this. You'll find this out, Morgan. Maybe you sow and reap with me. But Morgan used to always <laughs> just, I could get Morgan to jump, and they'd throw, I'd throw him up in the air. He'd go, woo! And then I would throw him. He'd say, come <laughs> jump in the pool. Woo! And then one day, Morgan goes, no! And said, I don't trust you, Dad. And I was like all hurt, and I didn't even drop him yet. And yeah. uh, But I was just like <laughs> yeah. all freaked out, you know? But I'm a sinful man. I could fail Morgan. I could drop but God, think how much that hurts a holy God who's perfect. Yeah. And we go, mm, I don't know. You're kind of old. You know, I don't know if you're really. I mean, I know your word's true, but maybe this is archaic. You know, like homosexuality today. People mm-hmm. are saying, oh, that's archaic. Or women pastors. Oh, that's archaic. Yeah. Now he's laughing with the woman pastor thing for sure because I'm going, that was the beginning of culture. That wasn't, that <laughs> yeah. wasn't a, in the middle of culture. That was the beginning. Women. Yeah. There is a dif- difference between men and women. So anyway, I'm what I'm just think, saying is I'm you have to believe that God's good. Mom would always say that. She was say like you always tell us that god's good and like so i've when you ask me sometimes like have you ever been mad at god and i'm sure maybe deep down i have but like i've never by the grace of god never really felt mad at him even in a hard situation because you had a great dad and a great mom yeah yeah i mean but some like me yeah i didn't have a good mom and never knew my dad my mom well my mom was alcoholic she died when i was six i then satan had that kind of on me i'm not making excuse for myself yeah but i have questioned the goodness of god and god had many times i'm just saying i'm thankful that she's driven that into us yeah Mm -hmm. but a lot of people like me have have had bad parental figures and sadly even though it's wrong we project Mm -hmm. that onto god a lot of times right you have Mm -hmm. a bad father oh like right we have a son doing that bad father bad you know god's bad and you know and we have to really work on that to go away to say even if my earthly father was bad mm-hmm. god is not bad yeah Maybe. yeah mm-hmm. yep all right but well, praise god you had a great father so it's easy for you to love god. <laughs> yeah it made me think of the song it was pretty great you said god Still is, is good <laughs> i didn't break my pat myself on the, the back of the it, okay trend's going crazy with the cameras because they're all just talking <laughs> but god is good yeah all, all the, the time, time. If he and here, clap my mic. Woo. That's no, for you, it's Trace. Just a that song doesn't even that know that song. <laughs> what? It's a top it's song. It's a song. You gotta finish it, Morgan. What That's is it? Like, God is good all the time. All the time. Yeah. God is good. Then he yeah. lying. In the <laughs> anyway, but God is good all the time, and we know that you guys have a lot of questions and things that you guys always bring up. So we would like to do podcasts like we did right now topical ones um so the next video will be on matthew 18 because we had someone say recently like what's matthew 18 and we're like are you serious because that's, <laughs> that's like saying what's what we John always three, talk six, about three. here at cabaret valley and so anyway <laughs> so we, we studied yeah. up read matthew 18 and i'm just mm-hmm. gonna verse 15 f- verse 15 starting verse 15 but matthew 5 is another one um and it talks about if someone else has uh or someone has something against you. It says, therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and you remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Hmm. So, and th- Can I interrupt that? So what's good things. about that is too, because people say, I don't have a problem with them. Exactly. They have a problem with me. Yep. So it's saying both ways. Exactly. It's saying if someone sinned against you, Matthew 18, 15, go to them. Don't go, mm-hmm. to, don't go to all your friends and cause a big gossip fest. Mm-hmm. Go to them one-on-one. And then if they don't, they say take a long walk up a short pier, then you take two or three to be non-biased, mm-hmm. unbiased witnesses. And then you take, then you take, if they say, You're I don't care, it, then you go, I'm going too far. But it's then, but the other one is if you present your offering, you realize someone, God convicts you that someone has something against exactly. you. Do your best. Why? And this is what we have to say too. Why? This is the other verse to study mm-hmm. is Ephesians 4.32. Why do we forgive? 
I don't feel like forgiving people, but Cause why? Because God is worthy because he says just as forgive others just as God through Christ has forgiven and you. And if you yeah. don't forgive others, then you yourself sins. will not be forgiven. And then I always say, but I'm a legalist, right? Oh, Every joke he says I'm a legalist. But heaven? I'm saying, how do you go to heaven with unforgiven sin? Yeah. Yeah. And to make mm. it simple for the simpletons like me, it's, you know, you don't have to be like, okay, what's Matthew 18? What's this verse? Like the the motive is peace and recon- reconciliation. Exactly. So if your motive and heart is to reconcile with someone, you're going to be in the right place, you yeah. know, whether they hurt you or you hurt them. Yeah. The and and know this, just you know. to kind of for some, now I think this goes too far, but is there some people you can't reconcile with? But yeah. you have but to you make can sure still release your, them. I, I always like the saying, and this is kind of giving away too much, but it's like uh, walking in unforgiveness, no matter what someone's done, is like drinking poison and hoping it hurts them. It mm-hmm. hurts you. So you have to do it for your health. Amen. I love what Booker T. Washington said. The guy used to be a slave. He said, I will not give any man the power in my life to make me hate him. Because when you allow someone to give the power to hate them or bitter towards them or wishing them ill, it only poisons you. Yeah. I think sometimes we have to forgive like more than once because of our sin, because we pick it up again. We pick up that bitterness again. And that's back to what I said a couple weeks ago when I was counseling someone is the, I believe it's fifth. Philippians 3.13, forgetting what lies behind, I press mm-hmm. on. There are certain things you need to deal with in counseling. Mm-hmm. You need to go back and look at how did I, you know, maybe I'm bringing this into my future. But there's certain mm-hmm. things you just got to let go, like my past of my family upbringing. There's certain, you see me talk about it and I get all right yeah. worked up. It's right in that yeah. state. That can make you forget gotta, God's good. <laughs> I just got to let go. Forget yeah. And it, right? Because it's just, there's no way to fix it. I just have to forgive it and let it go because if I think about it, I go, ah, you know, and I yeah. have to just say God is good and think forward with time. Christ, not think what <laughs> what deficit I had. Yeah. I think uh, we don't need Amen. to do Matthew 18. We already did. All <laughs> right. Yeah, we, we better wrap it up. We really up. need to <laughs> drive it in so well, that Could I you add a prayer, not... little snapper? Yes, yeah. of course. All right. Father, we just thank you so much for your love and thank you for your goodness. And we just pray that this really touched people. And I ask, Lord, that we would be people who move from, we're going to sin. And, and I pray we won't make light of sin because, Jesus, you said, if you love me, you obey my commands. And you said your commands, you said in First John, you're not burdensome. But, Lord, we're going to sometimes sin because we're human. But I pray that we'll move from sin. sin. We'll, we won't move into transgression, Lord, which is willful sin, which is making allowance for sin, which is justifying our hatred or bitterness or our sexual morality or looking at this or, or flipping people off while we drive. Lord, help us to not be transgressors. Thank you that even if we have been, you can forgive us. Mm-hmm. But I pray that we would move from being a transgressor to someone who sins and really didn't want to mm-hmm really just fell short and missed the mark, which we do. But I ask God that you would instill in your church again that as my wife used to say when she was living, she said that the fear of the Lord is not wanting to do anything that would hurt the heart of God. Hmm. So may we fear you, not in ha, but fear you in awe and reverence and saying you're worthy. When you tell us not to do something, we trust that Father God knows best. Amen. And when you tell us to do something, we trust that if we do that, you said we're going to have life and life more abundantly, or life to the fullest. But if we sow to the flesh and justify ourselves, then we're going to have reap death and corruption. And I think we can say sadly that we see a lot of death and corruption in the church today. And we don't want to see that anymore. We want to see families blessed. We want to see the church blessed. We want to see our country blessed. And we, we, we thank you, God, for Trump. But Trump is not the answer for America. You're the answer. Getting back to biblical truth and obeying out of great love and respect and worship for you. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Bless your church. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. Well, if you haven't already, please make sure... To like, subscribe, and share this video. Also, if you'd like to listen to us anywhere else, you guys can just type in Calvary Conversations. And please follow us on Instagram at Calvary Conversations. I better go get my crying baby, but we love you guys, and God bless. Like and subscribe. Love you guys.